TMG fam, it's your boy LN. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, man, the next topic, whew, this one right here, bro, definitely, definitely touchy, touchy type of uh, video. Um, I think it's worse now than ever before. That just due to social media and everything like that, man. And uh, we talking about stalkers, bro. I know ladies, y'all deal with this a lot more than than us fellas. You know, if somebody's stalking us, we probably like it. We probably enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, not to make light of the situation. Um, yeah, yeah. Ladies definitely, definitely deal with these, these, these creepos that just, I don't know, just weirdos, man. Be outside people's windows or just being always seeing the same person everywhere you go you start picking it up and it ain't a coincidence this person is stalking you um showing up to your job uh just all kind of different things and ways people do to stalk people these days man it's just insane that's why you got to be careful out here guys to be safe out here man and when you're traveling going to and from work or uh, just out and about, man, and meeting new people. It's even that, bro, meeting new people now. You just don't know. These people are crazy. They're crazy. And they'll turn into stalkers. You tell them no one time and or or you you want them to just be friends and then they can't take it no more. And it's insane. But um, this video here is five insanely creepy real life stalker stories. So, prepare for this one, y'all, all right? Let's get to it. In this video, we look at some rather creepy real-life stalker stories. Once you've heard them all, let us know which one you thought was the creepiest in the comments below. Number five, Under the Bed. In July of 2014, a 16-year-old girl from Chester, England, found herself in a terrifying situation. While at home, the girl started to receive strange text messages from a local 18-year-old boy by the name of Kyle Ravenscroft. He told her he was watching her and also texted her saying he had walked from his home and is waiting outside her house. He also added, I hope you find me hanging outside your house. Why he was going to hang himself is unclear. As the day went on, night came and a 16-year-old was getting ready for bed. She got another text message from Kyle saying, I'm in your house. This freaked the 16 year old out so much that she decided to sleep with her mother for the night. When she returned to her room in the morning, she'd noticed some shoe boxes out of place, which were lined up under her bed. She said she had the feeling as if someone was watching her, so she decided to check under the bed. To her surprise, Kyle was there laying there, staring at her. She rushed to get to her mother, her mother insisted that Kyle leaves the house. Kyle fled from the house. He still stayed. That's a different level of mental. That's, he still stayed in there. Like, nah, fam. You can't blame that one on the hormones and these kids and these hormones is out of control. No, fam. That's different. That's way more creepy than he stayed in there. And then the fact that he telegraphed everything. I'm, I'm coming over there. I'm going to. No. Hey, yeah, that's crazy. House. It turns out that Kyle had broken into the house the night before when he was texting the girl and had hid under her bed for the night. When questioned about it, Kyle said that he was sleeping under there. Before he fled from the house, he stole the girl's phone. Police said he used it in order to discover personal details about her life. Kyle had been stalking the girl for a while. Kyle had no previous convictions and was spared jail time. He got two years suspended sentence, a supervision order, and had to pay £100 compensation to his victim after pleading guilty. He also had to complete 80 hours of community service and was subject to a restraining order. Number 4. Ex-Girlfriend Stalker This story sure is a creepy one. In 1985, a 15-year-old by the name of Danny LaPlante was extremely in love with his girlfriend. 
He couldn't stand the moments he was without her and wanted to spend every minute of the day with her. A short while into their relationship, Danny's girlfriend dumped him. This made Danny distraught. He went missing. See, I told y'all. It do like a lot of dudes can't take rejection, bro. And then they get in that mindset of, oh, if nobody if, if I can't have you, nobody can't have you. And a lot of times y'all girls will laugh it off and be like, oh, he just so you know what I mean? It no, take that serious. And the signs be there, bro. Oh, he's so possessive. Oh, I like that about him. He's just so possessive. No, fam, that's a sign that you need to kind of pay attention to. Watch out for you. May need to leave him alone if he's that possessive. Like, seriously, man, y'all start out thinking that stuff is cute, and you think that's, oh, those are the endearing qualities you like. And then you figure out you built the wrong Build-A-Bear, and now you want to give it back, but too late, he's already attached to you. You know what I'm saying? No. Chip, Danny's girlfriend dumped him. This made Danny distraught. He went missing, and no one had seen or heard from him in two weeks. One night, the girl who had broken up with Danny was babysitting her sisters while her father was working late. They decided to watch a movie. While watching it, they decided to make some popcorn. Once done, they poured some in a bowl and left the rest in the kitchen. They later went to get more popcorn, but it had disappeared. They thought the occurrence was strange, but didn't think too much of it. Later on, once the movie finished, their father returned and the girls were getting ready for bed. The youngest, who was eight years old, was in her bedroom looking for pajamas when she opened up her closet and found Danny standing there. He was dressed in the children's dead mother's clothes, he had makeup all over his face and was wielding a hatchet. He told the eight-year-old to be quiet and tied her up. He eventually made his way throughout the house and managed to tie up the entire family. He placed them all in the eight-year-old's bedroom and told them he was going to kill them. He then told them that he would be right back so they better start praying. He then went to look for valuables he could steal. Thankfully, during this time, the eight-year-old was able to wriggle free. She jumped out the window and ran over to the neighbor's house and told them to call the police. The neighbors phoned the police, then got a gun and rushed over to the house. The neighbors untied the family but couldn't find Danny. Once the police arrived, they couldn't find him either. The family decided to stay with relatives for a while to get away from the house. After a few weeks, they returned to the home. When making their way to the driveway, they saw Danny in the window of the house. Yeah. The father Oh, this did no way, bro. <laughs> y'all obviously didn't know who y'all was dealing with, fam. Even with them, him knowing they called the police, this dude st stayed there. Whoa. When making their way to the driveway, they saw Danny in the window of the house. The father gets out the car and begins to start yelling. This alerts the neighbors. They then make their way over and call the police. The police enter the house and didn't find Danny but they were greeted by a disturbing scene. Pennies were glued to the ceiling. There was strange writing all over the walls. All of the clothes, furniture, floors, almost everything had been ejaculated on. Police continued to search the house and made their way down to the basement. They heard strange sounds coming from behind the washing machine. They pulled it away from the wall and there was a giant hole they looked in there and found Danny. It turns out... I was just about to say that he had to have a hiding space in there or something that they didn't know about, bro. I, I keep telling y'all, man, learn y'all home. Learn your home. Make sure you know every nook and cranny in your house. If there's any trap spots or hiding places people can get into. Tonight, go have a game of hide and seek with your family. And see if there's some places that you don't know about that are good hiding spots that your family run to. So you can identify these places, bro. I knew it was somewhere that they didn't know about. During the two weeks when he went missing after the breakup, he began to stalk the family in their own home. He lived in their walls and made several small holes in each room to spy on them. Danny only got a small time in juvenile hall for this, but this wasn't the end of him. Just two years later when he was 17, he broke into a couple's home and raped and killed a woman and her two children. He shot the woman to death in her bedroom and drowned the two children aged four and six in a bathtub. Th Make sure we blame our justice system, bro, because he wasn't locked up long enough or while he was there, he wasn't rehabilitated well enough. You know what I'm saying? Just because you get a sentence, they should still evaluate you now. 
some people are good enough to pass those because they're great liars. But for the most part, we need to figure out a way to better evaluate these people before we let them back out on the street, man. We could have saved this person's life. This, he got life in prison. In 2013, he tried to sue the prison he is in as they wouldn't provide him with dragon's blood and other strange items in order for him to practice his religion as a Wiccan. Number three, biggest fan stalker. This is one of the most horrific celebrity stalking cases in history. Robert John Bardo has a history of stalking young celebrities. In 1986, at the age of 16, he became obsessed with 18-year-old actor Rebecca Shafir. Rebecca was best known for her role in CBS sitcom My Sister Sam. During this time, Robert had written numerous letters to Rebecca and had even once tried to gain access to the set of My Sister Sam. He'd also had a shrine dedicated to her in his bedroom. Three years later in 1989, Rebecca's career started to take off and she was offered to audition for a role in The Godfather 3. She had also begun to star in several films. After seeing her perform a sex scene in a film, Robert became very disappointed and decided that she needed to be punished. He hired a private investigator and managed to obtain Rebecca's address. He went to her house and knocked on a door. When she answered, he claimed to be her biggest fan. She politely asked him to leave. He left, but returned shortly after. Once again, he knocked on the door. This time, when she answered, he pulled out a gun and shot her to death. He returned to his home in Tucson, but was quickly arrested after he informed his sister on what he had done and she told the police. He was charged with first degree murder and received a life sentence. The event also led to the enactment of stronger anti-stalking laws in California. Number two, The Watcher. The Watcher is- I was gonna say, cause I, I was about to uh, say before that, video before that one started that that's that's normally ladies normally ladies y'all are a lot of the like celebrity stalkers or rock rock star stalkers like it's normally the ladies so to see a dude actually do that now that one was that one was i wasn't expecting that one i was expecting that one to be a lady of a name given to an unknown person who began stalking a no they call those groupies they don't call the women stalkers there they call them groupies the Watcher. The Watcher is the name given to an unknown person who began stalking a family home in June of 2015. The couple purchased the New Jersey home for $1.3 million. Three days after moving in, they began to start receiving strange letters from a man who referred to himself as The Watcher. In the letters, he claimed his family has been watching the house since the 1920s. He said his grandfather watched it in the 1920s, then his father in the 1960s, and now it's his turn. The Watcher continued to send other letters. Some said, why are you here? I will find out. Others named the previous residents of the house and claimed they promised to bring him young blood. He also mentioned specific details about the house. Instead of moving, the couples decided to sue the previous owners as they didn't disclose the presence of the Watcher while selling the house. There have been theories from ghosts to bored teens to upset neighbours and even a theory that the new owners wrote the letters themselves just for the reason to sue. The Watcher still remains anonymous and continues to send letters. Number 1. Subway Stalker this occurrence happened in 2014 to a 20-year-old female subway worker. While working there, she noticed a man about 35 to 40 years old would come in every day for lunch. He was fascinated with the girl's stretched ears and piercings and would always ask her questions about them. While he sat down and ate his lunch, he would watch her non-stop until he left. He wouldn't take his eyes off her. This continued for about two weeks. Every day, the man would ask the girl for her phone number, claiming he wanted to talk because he had some piercing accessories he wanted to give her. The girl would always decline and refuse to give her number over. One day, the girl was alone in the store as her manager had to run to the bank. As business was slow, the girl went into the back room and played on her phone. She heard someone at the entrance, so went and looked, but no one was there. She then saw the man outside the front of the store walking fast as if he was in a hurry. The store's phone then rings. It's the creepy man. He asked if it was the girl with the nice ears. He then asked if she was alone and in the back room. The girl was creeped out and quickly hung up and texted her manager about the situation. He called again. 
This time, he started asking strange questions, such as what would she do with him if they was in a room with the door locked, and if she had a boyfriend. He then called once again. This time, the girl's manager picked up and told him if he calls again, she will phone the police. One week later, after- If? It, it, yo, why is people- Why don't nobody ever want to just call the police anymore? Somebody please help me understand that, bro. What is the issue- with contacting the police, man. I don't get it. Because what's going to happen is you let them off the hook. One night you're out back of the subway. You're taking out the trash. Or you're leaving to get in your car one night. He's, he's following you and he kills you. When you could have gotten the police involved, got them on it, and probably had your, your chances of survival a lot better bro like that is starting to tick me off threatening to contact the police no don't threaten nobody do it no i mean situations would probably be reversed or the outcomes would be different if they would have just contacted the police it's crazy craziness picked up and told him if he calls again she will phone the police one week later, after she finished work, she was about to go to her car and looked outside and saw the man standing near it. We, I just got it out of my mouth. <laughs> I just got it out of my mouth, bro. One... Did I mute it? My bad, bro. I, I'm getting so... My bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm so... I be so invested in these videos, man. I tell y'all, bro, I be invested. One week later, had they the contacted the police, they'd already... See, one week later. Now, let's hope she doesn't die. And told him if he calls again, she will phone the police. One week later, after she finished work, she was about to go to her car and looked outside and saw the man standing near it and looking inside it. She accidentally left the doors unlocked and he crawled inside to the back seat and shut the door. Her manager locked the entrance door of the store and called the police. The police arrived, dragged him out of the car and arrested him. On him, they found a butcher knife, rope, and a rag, and a bottle of chloroform. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed- He meant business. He was coming back to finish the job. Like, see? That could have been bad for her, bro. Bad. He was not playing around this time. All those other times where he still figured, like, maybe I got a shot with her, but now when he sees that she, the manager threat. He was ready to end her life, bro. And what we just had this conversation about locked doors. <laughs> Did anybody think about that? When they said she didn't lock her doors? We was just having this conversation the other night. Shout outs to everybody who uh hashtag I locked it. <laughs> I was I, I was having a good time with those. You know what I'm saying? Or it was just crazy to see how many people who hadn't locked their doors and went back to check and was like, dang, bro, I was sitting here legitimately and hadn't had my doors locked. You know what I mean? But yeah, lucky. She is lucky, man. That could have been so bad, bro. Y'all be careful out here, man. It's, these stalkers are like, for real. These people are possessive. They feel like even the celebrities, they feel like the cele they, they feel like they got a personal relationship with these celebrities. And they feel like they're their number one fan and they should be able to do things and show up at people's house. And if they don't get the right response, they want to end the celebrity's life. It's it's crazy. It's insane. The sense of entitlement out of certain people, man. It's scary in that sense. So y'all yeah, be careful. Recognize the signs in people. Even when you starting out dating, man, recognize the signs. All right. It's your boy L, man. Y'all uh, get at me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought of this crazy video. You know, till the next reaction of my peace, y'all stay solid. Hey.